Hey guys, it's it here. So today was the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 competitive reveal, and man did it not disappoint with just the sheer amount of information that we got from it. So we're just going to start off and dive right into it. But first, quick note about the gameplay. This is domination on the map recovery, and I'm running the HBR A3 throughout most of it. I think I did pretty good, if I do say so myself. But anyway, moving on. First and foremost, interpret this information as you may, good news or bad news, but regardless, Call of Duty is officially shifting its competitive scene to the PlayStation 4 and away from the Xbox One. Now of course the competitive playlists, or as now they're being called Arena Play, will still be available on both consoles, most esports tournaments and whatnot will now be hosted on the PlayStation 4 rather than the Xbox One. So this, I guess you'd call it competitive Call of Duty console shift, has kind of been speculated upon since E3, where it was announced first that Sony had scored the Call of Duty exclusivity deal. So it's definitely not incredibly surprising news, but it's um, this was the first time we finally got a definitive answer on it, so I thought it might be wise just to throw that in there. Okay, so with that out of the way, we can talk about all the gameplay changes happening to Black Ops 3 Competitive. And the first and biggest one that comes to mind is the new Restrict and Protect system. So the idea behind this is that in Competitive Call of Duty, a lot of equipment and gear are deemed anti-competitive, and are left restricted from competitive play. And this kind of only furthers the separation between Competitive Call of Duty and the normal game itself. Well, the team over at Treyarch wasn't very fond of this system and wanted to make competitive and vanilla gameplay a bit more similar. So to accomplish this goal, Treyarch has introduced the new Restrict and Protect system. And the way this works is that players will alternate roles and selecting a piece of equipment to be restricted from use in a single game, while it's at the same time selecting of a piece of equipment to protect from being restricted. So essentially one player can restrict, say, UAVs from being run in a single game, whereas another player can protect a certain score streak or weapon from being restricted, and in doing that essentially guarantees that piece of equipment's use. So overall, personally, I think it's a pretty nice compromise. I think that it's going, or I know for a fact, it's going to allow competitive gameplay to be a bit more open in a sense, and it's almost going to guarantee and force players to make very strategic decisions. So personally, I'm pretty excited to see this system in action. But another very similar gameplay mechanic for competitive is the new draft system, being introduced for specialist abilities. So there's been a lot of talk about how the specialists in Black Ops 3 are going to affect competitive play, because there's some specialists that are a bit more geared for one game mode than another, in a sense. Like the Ruin Specialist has an overdrive ability, which would allow him to run much faster to the flag or with the flag or ball in uplink or capture the flag. So how does Treyarch plan to stop teams from... Well, we'll say exploiting this and just having everyone on their team selecting a single specialist. Well, they're introducing the new draft system, which is rather simple in the sense that it only allows one player per specialist. So there can't be two players running the scythe or all six players running ruin. It's going to kind of force players to select and designate a single OBJ player and another slayer or what have you, rather than just having everyone run to the objective like a chicken with its head cut off. So personally, in my opinion, this change coupled with the one mentioned prior I like, because I'm excited to see them promote such versatility in Call of Duty, and I think it's going to make competitive games a lot more strategy-based, and hopefully a bit more exciting too, so I'm pretty excited as of now. Oh, however, there is one last change I almost forgot to mention, and that is that Competitive COD will now also have a new win-based ranking system rather than the old score-based one, which is going to force players to emphasize playing the objective a lot more, and if that wasn't enough, leaving a game mid-session or rage quitting instantly demotes you back two ranks. So say I'm gold three and I rage quit, all of a sudden I'm back to gold one. So they're definitely trying to discourage people from leaving mid-game, which is going to be very nice, because it sucks when someone leaves the game in pubs, but when someone leaves a competitive match and he or she can't be replaced mid-game, it's almost kind of crippling, so I'm very happy to see Treyarch do this. Anyway, overall, I think today was a pretty good reveal. I'm a lot more excited about competitive than I was before, and hopefully you are also satisfied with the changes as well. Alrighty guys, this is where the video ends, and I thank you for watching, and hope to see all you fantastic people in my next video. Bye bye everyone.